What we're going to do today is make a small bud vase with image transfers and um, these image transfers are laser jet image transfers. So things that you'll need, you'll need a rolling pin. Um, we won't have these available for uh, public use um, because the cleaner that we have will uh, damage the pins. Um, you'll need clay. And going back to this, if you are not comfortable rolling out your own slab with a rolling pin, you can use the slab roller, but gloves are required. This clay is probably about two and a half to three pounds. You will also need a bucket of water, a tile sponge. These two things can be purchased at Home Depot if you are bringing your own tools, which we're recommending. Uh, you'll need a shore form. This can also be purchased at Home Depot. It's S-U-R is how you spell the name of the tool. Or you can get fancy ones that are mud tools. Those are sold online or through high water clay. You will also need a couple of brushes. So these brushes, these hockey brushes are awesome for putting slip on a pot. And then this is just a regular brush just in case I need it. You'll need a small container. You can get these small Ziploc containers at Walmart. You really only need one about half this size that I have here. Um, you don't need any more than that and you can get several projects out of it will make you up in your container slip to keep in your tool set so you have your very own and you don't have to touch communal things. Um, this slip is just white liquid slip and it has a little bit of sodium silicate in it to deflocculate it. You'll also need a rib. I have these tools here and this is for the edges, so I can use that for texture for the feet that I'm planning. This is called a wipe out tool, W-O-T, watt tool. I have this just in case I need to clean up any edges. A needle tool. I have a scoring tool here. If you don't have a scoring tool, you can also use your needle tool or a cork with some sewing needles embedded in it also work great. The transfer part that we're doing, um, you can email your images to your instructor ahead of time and they can have those printed out for you. Uh, you can find a ton of stuff on Pinterest. If you, the search that I used was uh, black and white patterns. Um, the patterns that you're looking for need to be chunky patterns. Um, and then I would also bring your own set of scissors so you can cut away any white edges and just leave one white edge at the top. If you don't have a laser jet printer at home, um, get in touch with your instructor and they can print these out for you. We have one here at the studio and we're happy to print them out in advance for you. Um, our email addresses are usually our first name, followed by a period, last name, at tampagov.net. If you're not sure, call us and we can give you the spelling of the name. 813-259-1687 in case you don't have that number. Um, this is another good image. You can see that it's very black and white. It's very chunky. There's not a lot of fine lines. These little lines here might give me a problem. We'll see. We can try that out later. Um, images such as this, which are really small and super, super detailed, lots of fine lines. That's not going to work well for us. So don't go for stuff like this. You'll have a hard time. This is another one that's not great for this process. It's very, very fine lines and there, the slip just will not release from that. So the idea is that the toner in the ink is acting as a resist for the slip that we're putting on there for the design. 
So really fine lines like that don't really resist very well. All right, so we're gonna get started. I'm gonna show you how I would hand roll a slab if you're not using the slab roller and don't have any gloves. Remember that you have to bring a roller with you. The studio rollers are not gonna be available. So we're gonna get started rolling out our slab. So I'm gonna start with about two and a half to three pounds of clay. And I'm just gonna kind of smush it down you can also take and kind of gently throw it down at an angle. You don't have to throw it super hard. And remember, if you're doing this with a partner on your table, you might be shaking a project they're working on. So just be mindful of those around you. It's always a nice thing to do. So the reason I did that is because I want to stretch it. Now, if you're rolling in a slab roller here at the studio, you are going to be required to use gloves for public health safety. So when you're rolling slabs, you wanna roll in one direction and that will keep the peaks and the valleys that happen to a minimum. I also do little quarter turns or half turns as I'm rolling out those slabs um, because typically sometimes your edges will be chunkier than the middle and that helps prevent that. So let's roll this slab out. Once you have your slab rolled out, you're going to compress the slab with your rib. So I use the straight edge of my rib and I do it in two directions. So I'm going to go one direction down and one direction across. And then I'm going to flip this slab over and do the same thing on the back side. That helps compress the clay back into itself. It helps with stress cracks as your um, piece is drying. And in addition, I want to mention that this slab is probably about a quarter of an inch thick or roughly it might be a tiny bit thinner, but you don't want to go much thinner than that. Um, the thinner you make your slab, the more fragile it is in the end. So we're going to get started on that. We're going to stir up our slip and then you should have your wet sponge near you just in case parts don't release easily which will happen it's part of the process it's all right And then if you want to dab these parts away, you want to do it while they're wet. If you let them dry on there, um, it will be almost impossible to get them away. So I just kind of come in with the edge of my sponge and let that wet sponge soak that slip up. I'm not going to be um, super duper cautious about it. It's, I think it's fine if there's a spot here or there. So you can see that this is very, very shiny. And I want to keep it um, flat until it's, the shine has just gone out of it. And then it's ready to transfer. So I'm going to take and set it down. The easiest thing to do is to grab an edge and I've got my finger where the black design is there so I'm not messing up the slip. And we're going to set it down. Now you can see the back of this 
is still pretty wet. That's what you're looking for. If you can see that the edges are drying, you're going to have some trouble getting that to transfer. Um, it's the same pretty much with any transfer you try to do. And then you take your rib, whatever size you've got with you, a soft rib that's flexible is best for this and you're going to compress that gently down into your slab. So this is the area that I'm talking about, if you can see that. Right here, you can see where it's getting dry and also right there. If that happens to you, um, just wet the back of your paper a little bit. You'll see it come back to life and you know that that's enough water. Those edges dry out pretty fast. I'm not pushing very hard on this. And then we take this edge that we did not cut and we get a little peeksy. And then you do the reveal, which is the fun part. Okay, so the transfer is a one and done thing. <clears throat> you can't really reuse this. So just crumple it up, throw it away. I did set up a couple other transfers here, so I'm going to go ahead and cover my whole slab in these transfers as soon as they're dry enough. base it'll not be very big so if you are more comfortable using templates you can always cut up a template this is a sheet of copy paper and how it would be if you're not sure what your templates gonna look like from the 2d version you can wrap it and kind of figure out those points of contact and you can see kind of how tall it would be, how long it would be. If you didn't want it to be this um, short this way, you would have to get a longer piece of paper because that is the length of, of this paper here. You can also just eyeball it, but it's harder to get straight edges. Um, so, you know, just things to consider there. I'll show you how to make the template version of this project. So I'm just going to cut this down a little bit shorter. I don't want it to be quite so tall. And then find a place you like on your slab. Remembering that I do need slab parts for the top and the bottom of this. So I'll need this piece and this piece. You can take an X-Acto knife. We didn't say that you needed this in the beginning materials, um, but these are handy tools to have in your toolkit, little X-Acto knives for cutting. If you don't want to invest in this tool, you can use a butter knife from your kitchen. You can use a needle tool. Any of those things will work. Okay, so you can see this is going to be a short little guy, but that's kind of the fun. It's a bud base, so they aren't meant to be big pieces. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to bevel the edge on the top of one side and the bottom of the other. So 
You can do that a couple ways. You can eyeball the underneath by undercutting it or you can flip the slab over. I'm gonna flip this slab over so you can see what that looks like. You do need to make sure that your slab is, um, your slip decoration has dried a little bit, but this slab is still very, very soft. If you can see, it's like a cooked noodle. So I can bend it pretty easily. Um, and that's what we're looking for, for the soft shapes that we're gonna make. So I'm cutting at an angle. So that we've got kind of a 45 degree bevel there. And then I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna do the same thing to the underside. And then we're gonna score this side and flip it back over and score the other side. You can use your needle tool for this by just creating cross hatches. That means you would go with one direction with your needle tool one way and then you would hit it going the cross direction the other way if you don't have one of these tools. I've seen people take a wine bottle cork and embed sewing needles into the bottom of the cork and that works really nicely for um, this tool as a homemade tool. Okay, so um, now we take and we put a little bit of slip on those edges, not a ton. I'm just using water for a slip and a brush. And because my clay is so wet, really don't need to use a ton of slip. Now I'm gonna take and find my shape. So I kind of set it up on its edge and then I'm gonna slowly round it in. So you've gotta use some fairly gentle fingers here. I almost, I describe it like a pinball flipper, right? If you're batting the edges, only your pinball flipper kind of flexes for you. Okay, so I've got these kind of gently connected. Now I'm gonna come in on the inside and the outside and work that edge together. to be a little round bud base you can or you can come and kind of shape it so I'm gonna kind of push from the interior and make it a really soft square so you can see it's a super soft square it's not um, a really hard square with hard edges You can make that as square or unsquare as you like and prefer. So we're gonna let this set up for a minute. We'll come back and we will work on the top and the bottom and the feet. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for the bottom and the top now is I'm gonna get the shape of this. I want it to be a little bit domed. So in order to do that, I'm gonna cut to the outside of this on for both the bottom and the top and I'm gonna set that and let that set up a little bit with a little bit of a dome so I'll show you how I do that I just really loosely cut on the outside of this shape and then I'm gonna take this and start curving it 
I want to do this before it gets too dry because it'll crack a lot as it dries, um, the slip that is. So I'm kind of taking the curvy side of my rib and creating a gentle dome on what will be the inside of this. So you can see kind of where that's headed, right? This will be cut away and it will be one piece. But for now, we're going to set this aside. And then we'll cut out the bottom as well. come back to this once this is set up just a little bit and can hold its shape just a little bit better and then I'll make some cuts and we'll show you how you do that. Okay, so now this has set up a little bit and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace underneath here all the way around and then I know where to cut. Okay, so now I'm gonna thin this out before I attach it. So I've got this on and it's rounded on the bottom. So we're gonna put the top on there now. But before I put the top on, I wanna put the feet on because if I set this down like that, it would smush out the round part and I wanna keep okay, that Okay, so I'm gonna make the feet for this. When you're uh, rolling a coil for feet, you wanna kind of roll in one direction and that will keep your coil from being all crazy and out of round. And I also kind of tap the edges down. All right, so I cut off the weird little part right there. And then I cut each foot off of the one before it so I know they're all the same. So when you're uh, making these little cone shaped feet, you can roll just one side. and that is the shape you get. Or you can set it down and kind of twist it in your fingers. So I'm spinning it around as I pinch. Either way works. Don't worry if they're not all the same size because we're gonna cut them again to where they match each other. So I'll set them like so and see how close I came. And if any adjusting needs to happen at this point, you can come back in with your needle tool and kind of give them a little chop if you need to and then we'll tap those sharp edges down. And then I like to give them a little bit of texture. So the texture that is kind of one of my favorite ones to do in handles and feet um, and little things that you add onto pots is I love to take the edges of wooden tools and roll them Or you can take a wooden knife tool and accomplish the same thing. Okay, and then we're ready to attach them. 
so they're going to go on the four corners. I am going to kind of pounce them down just a little bit. So this is kind of a Lana Wilson technique, which is really fun and gives them a little bit more life. They're like a soft serve ice cream cone. at that point and then I pre-fashion them to the corners before I attach anything and just make sure that I like the size I like where they're gonna how they're gonna look if I need to make adjustments all of those things Okay, now if you prefer, you can kind of mark where they're gonna go. And then you're gonna scratch and attach. Okay, and then we're gonna let these sort of set up before we go to attach the top. So then you're gonna cut this out. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I have a little bit of an overhang, but I'm going to wrap that over the top just like I did the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and attach that. Before I do that, I'm going to smooth the edge right here. This is getting pretty dry, so I'm going to actually come in with my needle tool to make some deeper score marks, and that's something that you want to kind of pay attention to. This is leather hard at this stage now, so if I have really, really fine score marks um, here and here, they aren't going to want to adhere to each other as best as if you've got a little bit deeper marks. And that's something that, um, you know, in terms of like the slip, it's more about the connection than it is the, the slip that you use. So I'm using water for slip and that's just fine as long as my connection is really good. my thumb around this outside edge here and that'll kind of fold it over. So a really big trend in the ceramic world right now is people using colored slips um, and allowing the slip to be really thick and ooze out of your connections and it's just another thing that accents pieces. If you look at a potter named Brett Friend, it's German for friends, so it's spelled F-R-E-U-N-D, I believe. He's got a lot of these kinds of connections with colored slip, and they're really interesting. So that can be something that you can investigate in your work if you want. Um, Mason stains are available at high water clay, and then you could just at home take an immersion blender and blend up some of your clay body and throw that stain in there to the point of saturation that makes your heart sing. Just little suggestions of things you can do to change up your work. If you want to get rid of that, that's okay too. That's where this tool comes in we talked about in the beginning. This is called a Watt tool, W-O-T, a wipe out tool. It's a painter, painter's tool. And you can just take any edge and come in and kind of clean that up if you wanna get rid of that stuff. Just have your sponge near you so you can wipe it clean. And then you could fuss with that as much as you wanted to. The last thing that you want to do is put a hole in the top here. And that hole can be any shape you want. I'm just going to do a really simple 
kind of rectangle on the top. So I'm going to pre-draw And so this is a bud vase. I'm just going to have it off to the side. And then my little buds of flowers or foliage would be coming on this side. And then this side would be free to see the design. And then I'm going to come in and just kind of refine this cut edge on the inside. So I'm cutting it a little bit of a bevel on the interior. And then also on the exterior. Okay, so that is the bud vase with the laser jet transfer. Thanks for watching. Bye.